Welcome everyone to Blender Art Critique number 14. So this is the 14th Blender Art Critique on my channel. Now you may have seen the post on my community tab, but I have decided that I will be ending the art critiques. I do really enjoy seeing your guys' artwork, and I know that the art critiques have been helpful to many of you, but I'm not really that interested anymore in doing the art critiques. And also, I am trying to create Blender tutorials and Blender content for a living, so I'm trying to prioritize my time so I can focus more on creating content that will be more beneficial towards my business. Now this one will not be the last art critique, I will be having one more art critique at the starting of December of 2021. So if you'd like to be in the last art critique, then you can submit your artwork through the Google form, the link will be in the description, and submit your artwork before December 1st of 2021. Then on December 1st, I will look through all of the submissions, and I will choose which ones I want to critique, and then I'll be creating the last art critique video. So up on the screen, these are all of the artworks that I'm going to be critiquing in this video. Now, I do apologize if your artwork didn't make it in the video. I'm not able to critique all of the artworks that are submitted, but thank you everyone for sending in your artwork. And then real quick before we start the art critiques, I wanted to let you know about my Martian Environment Blender course. So I've created a course on how to create this Martian environment that you can see right here up on the screen. And it's a seven part tutorial series where I show you step by step in real time how to create this Martian environment. And purchasing this Blender course is also a really great way to help support me and my YouTube channel. So I'll have the link in the description to the Blender course if you are interested in purchasing. And thank you everyone who's purchased purchase the course so far, I really do appreciate it because it really does help to support me. So this first artwork comes from Nia M. And you said I was trying to go for a realistic looking render, but it looks a bit off and you were wondering if I have any suggestions. So I do think that this is already pretty photorealistic, but I do think there are a few things that you could do to make it a little more realistic. I do really like the lighting that you have and the background that looks really good. And I also like the table and those reflections and everything do look really good. Let's go over how I would critique this. So the first thing that I would do is I would change the ice because the ice cube in the whiskey looks a bit too sharp like right over here on the edges you can see that's very very sharp and a real ice cube usually isn't that sharp it does have a little bit of a roundness so i would make the ice cube less sharp and then also the glass here is pretty thick and I probably would make it a little bit thinner, not way thinner, but it does just seem a little bit thick. And I was looking at reference images and usually I think glasses are a bit thinner. So I would make that a little more thin. Now also this texture here does look a little bit low quality, um, even from looking at it, just looking at the entire thing, not zooming in, it does look a little bit low quality, but especially if I just zoom in a little bit, it almost looks like it's a little bit pixelated or maybe it was just a little bit low resolution. So if you can, and I would try to find a higher quality image of this whiskey label. Now I was comparing this image to real photos and it seems like usually um, beer or whiskey usually has a little bit of bubbles and maybe a little bit of froth. So I would at least add bubbles in here. So just add some bubbles here and there and also maybe put some bubbles on the surface or you could also put some froth or bubbles on the top of the whiskey um, kind of right up here. And I think that would really help to make it look more photorealistic. And then again, I was looking at references images and it seems like the glass usually just has a tiny little bit of noise um, so this glass here it's very very smooth you can kind of see all the reflections there they're just going down straight down and they're very smooth so probably what I would do is I would add like a noise texture and put that noise texture into a bump node and then put that into the normal and then turn the strength way down on the bumps so that it's very 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 subtle just so that it gives a little bit of wobbling in the glass because the glass does look very very smooth now glass Glass is pretty smooth so it should be very very subtle but when I was looking at reference images I just saw a tiny little bit of wobbling so just adding that little bit of imperfection would really help to make it more realistic and then also again I was looking at reference images and it seems like usually whiskey is a little bit more of an orangey or yellow color so the world around here does seem to be pretty red um, but what I would do is I would just make the uh, whiskey a little bit more of a yellow or orangish color and then also something else that I thought of that would just make it a little bit more photorealistic is if you added some fingerprints on the glass so if you go onto a web 
website like Ambient CG, um, you can search for a fingerprint texture and you can download a fingerprint roughness texture and then you could put that on the glass and that way the glass will still be very shiny and reflective but there will be a few areas here and there where you can see a little bit of a fingerprint and it'll just add a little subtle roughness um, and just make it look a little bit more photorealistic. So that's what I would do to improve this so I think if you did those things then it would really make this look more realistic. So I hope the critiques were helpful and thank you for sending this in. All right, so this next one is an animation and this comes from Salvatorn. So you said uh, you made this soccer animation this month and the kick animation and character was from Mixamo and you animated the ball moving manually. Uh, so that's why the ball looks a little bit jaggy and you're hoping that I can give you some feedback so that you can improve your next animation. All right, so this is a really cool animation and it also has like sound effects. So let's go ahead and watch this. Yeah, so this is a really cool animation. Um, it's quite photorealistic and I really like all the nature in the scene um, and also the sound effects work really well. Um, I like the nature. I also like all the textures that you used and also that metal shed also looks very realistic. So the environment is really great and I really like it. And you said that you got the character animation from Mixamo. So I'm mainly just going to be critiquing the soccer ball animation and the character animation does look really quite good. All right, so the first shot looks really good. And then when you get to the second shot, um, the camera kind of zooms past some plants and those plants look super sharp they kind of look jagged so I would probably add a subdivision surface modifier to them um, and then also you could add a solidify modifier to thicken them up a little bit um, the other nature looks really quite good but when you go right past those plants you can just see how jagged they are um, so that's not very realistic so that's not really a critique about the animation but I think it would help uh, the scene just to make that a bit more realistic so the first thing that I noticed is that the soccer ball is just kind of sitting on the ground and then it starts to roll sideways from left to right towards the character and that doesn't really make any sense. The ball just wouldn't start moving on its own. So what I would do is I would have the ball already rolling towards the person. Maybe somebody kicked it to them or maybe they kicked it and it kind of bounced off of the wall or the house or something. Now when the guy kicks the ball that does look very realistic. I think that looks really good. Um, but when the ball bounces off of that metal beam I think there should be a bit more of a squash so you may have heard of the squash and stretch it's one of the 12 principles of animation and especially for a soccer ball it's going to squash a little bit not too much um, but it just seems like it bounces right off of it almost like it's a metal ball and I think it would be more realistic if you just had a tiny little bit of a squash kind of squish down the ball and then kind of have it spring away Whereas right now it just immediately bounces off of that metal beam and then it bounces over onto the shed. Now this is a metal shed and it does look a little bit rickety. So probably what I would do is when the ball bounces off the shed, I would have the shed kind of shudder a little bit, or maybe you could just take um, the door of the shed or just that metal wall and kind of have it like shudder a little bit and kind of vibrate because that ball is hitting it really quite hard. Um, so that's what I would do. Now when the ball bounces off and then bounces back on the ground, it kind of bounces up and it looks like it's kind of banging into some kind of invisible ceiling and that just isn't really realistic. Um, so what I would do is I would change the keyframe interpolation because right now it looks like maybe you were using the linear interpolation. So it just goes from one keyframe to the next keyframe. But if a ball like that was bouncing, it would kind of go up and then there would kind of be a bit of an arc before it falls back down. Whereas right now it's just kind of really jagged and it looks Looks like it's bouncing off some sort of invisible ceiling kind of in the middle of a scene and then also I do think the ball is bouncing way too much so it kind of makes sense that it would go up and then hit off the metal beam and if it's hitting kind of on the side of the metal beam and it's kind of coming on the side as well they would bounce over and hit the shed that makes sense but then when it hits the ground it just suddenly bounces up and down a lot and I just really don't think it would do that um, especially because it's hitting dirt and grass it would probably slow down its bounce um, and also its momentum is going to slow down every time it hits something so what I would do is probably just have it bounce once or maybe twice so I would have it hit the metal beam then it would hit the shed and then after that once it hits the ground it would probably only bounce about one or two times and it would probably rapidly slow down and then just kind of roll to a stop and also it would probably bounce a little bit farther so I would probably just have it kind of bounce and roll out of the camera view 
And then right here at the end, you can kind of see that the ball is rolling and then suddenly the ball kind of jerks to a stop, but it's still moving sideways. So it stops rolling, but it's still moving. Um, and I don't quite exactly know why this happened. Maybe it's with the keyframe interpolation. So just kind of maybe move the keyframes around and make it so it continues to roll until it fully stops. And then maybe changing the keyframe interpolation uh, to Bezier. So it's a bit more smooth instead of linear. So those are my critiques. So I think if you improve those different things, then this would look really nice. Um, but as far as the lighting goes, the textures, the environment, and all of that, this is really, really quite good. Um, but I do think that animation could be improved. So that's the critique. Thank you for sending this in, and I hope the critiques were helpful. All right, we have a cool abstract scene here, and this comes from Arcadia Bay. So you sent in this cool artwork here. There's like a big hallway, and then it looks like it's been flooded or something. I really like the glowing light that's coming from the windows, and it looks like maybe there's some dust in the room, and there's um, some sunbeams coming in. Uh, I really like that lighting. Let's go over how I would critique this. So the first thing that I would do is I would definitely change the scale of the wall texture, because if you think about how big a person would be, you know, you can kind of look at this this couch and kind of imagine how big a person would be. Um, this wall, it's scaled up way too big, so you can see too much detail in the texture. So I would scale the texture down so you can actually see more of it. So that all of these little bits here, the little scratches and everything are a lot smaller and you can see more of it. Um, because it looks like it's been scaled up way too much. Um, it looks like maybe a person's hand would probably even be like this big where I'm moving my mouse, but you can see a person is probably gonna be about that big. Um, judging by how big the couch is. So yeah, I definitely think you need to scale the UVs up so that you can see a lot more of that texture. And then also I would just add a lot more context to the scene because it is abstract and I do sometimes like those abstract renders. They can look really cool, but I feel like the abstract renders work when there's a little bit more context and you can at least understand them a bit more. Um, so for this scene, I was thinking like, how did the water get into the house or into the hallway? Maybe have a little bit of a story. Maybe there's some flood outside or just something and then also what is the large sphere for I really don't know what the large sphere is maybe it's some sort of like sculpture or like artwork or something I'm not quite sure maybe like putting it on a stand or making it look like some sort of artwork in the hallway would help um, then also I'm not quite sure if this is like a living room or more of like a large hallway because there are plants and it also looks like there's a mirror and there's a couch and these all make me think maybe it's like a living room but then there's this giant hallway with these giant windows um, and especially looking at the size of the couch, those windows are like really, really big. Um, so I'm not quite sure if this is like a giant hallway or a living room. If it's a living room, then I would probably make it a lot smaller and definitely make the windows smaller. Or if it's a hallway, then probably I would change out some of these elements and not use a couch. And then also giving a fabric texture to this couch would help as well. Um, because if I zoom in here, um, the couch almost looks like a plastic couch because it doesn't have any texture. It's just this red color. And then it is also pretty shiny um, so it just kind of looks like a plastic couch so you could go onto a website like ambient cg and download a free fabric texture and just add it onto the couch so that's what i would do to improve this but i think the main thing is really just giving it more context because it does seem a little bit abstract um, and i do like some of those abstract renders that people do but this seems just a little bit too abstract and i would like a little bit more context just to know what this is but of course this is all just my opinion you can totally feel free to disagree so that's the critiques thank you for sending this in and I hope the critiques were helpful. All right, so hopefully I'm pronouncing this right. So this next one comes from Virilian Corello. So this is a very nice living room scene, very photorealistic. And you said you'd like to know what you can add to the living room scene uh, to make it more interesting and also how you could improve the lighting. And then you did send in two renders. You sent in this one and then you also sent in this one here. Um, but I really don't like this one too much. I don't really like the yellow colors um, and it also just doesn't look as realistic. I do really like this one better because it has so much more more natural light and it does just look a lot more photorealistic so I will be critiquing this one. Now as far as the lighting goes I don't really have too many critiques. You could add maybe some lamps um, like some lamps in the scene as objects to light up the scene and then also you could maybe add a little bit of light coming from the background coming in but I do really like the natural light coming from the sky here. I do think that looks really good. Maybe just making everything a little bit brighter in Blender's compositor um, or just in a 2D program you could make everything a little bit brighter but I 
I do think the lighting is pretty good, so I don't have much critiques for that. Now, you were wondering about stuff you could add into the scene, um, and I definitely think you could add in more stuff because there isn't really very much stuff in the scene. So some things that I were thinking was maybe like a mug on the coffee table or maybe a laptop. You could also add like a DVD player in here to play things on the TV. Um, you could also add in some different books maybe on the shelf here, uh, maybe add some pillows and some pillows over here on the couch here. Um, and then also maybe adding in some kind of floor lamp, like putting a lamp on the floor, one of those lamps that kind of come up, um, and that would add more light into the scene. Um, maybe adding some more things on the table, just some things like that, maybe some books or maybe even a clock or something like that. But I do think adding more things into the scene would really help to make it more interesting because it is just a little bit simple. Um, there's not very many things in the scene. Now I would also add a texture to the wall. Um, it can just be some sort of subtle noise, um, but usually walls do have a little bit of a texture. So you could look on a website like Ambient CG or CG Bookcase or um, Texture Haven. You could look on a website like that and just try to find some free texture. Just a basic wall texture, maybe a plaster texture or some sort of painted wall. Um, I think adding a texture to the wall would definitely help. And then also I think that the pieces of wood right over here are too rough. I think it would be more realistic if the wood was actually a lot more smooth, um, especially because this is something indoors. Um, it just looks really, really rough right now. Um, so what I would do is turn the bump way down to maybe just like a 0.1 or something really small because it does just look really, really rough right now. And then another thing that would really help to make it more photorealistic would be to add a fabric texture. So again, you could find some uh, free texture on like ambient CG or CG bookcase or some other texture websites um, and you could find a fabric texture and add it on because right now especially right over here this almost just looks like some sort of plastic um, it doesn't look very photorealistic and I think it would definitely help if you added a fabric texture so that's what I would do to improve this but I do think this looks really cool and I also do really like the composition and I really like all that natural light coming in there from those open doors so I hope the critiques were helpful and thank you for sending this in all right we have a really cool render here another abstract render and this one comes from sugared placebo i don't really know why you picked that name but okay so this is a really cool artwork here i really do quite like it um and you said what do you think of the composition um i do think the composition is really cool and you're wondering if i've managed to keep your attention or is there too much going on in the scene and you're also wondering what you can do to increase the photorealism so this is a very cool abstract scene and i really do like this um it's very clear what it is it looks like a kitchen scene and then maybe there's like a living room kind of back there um, with some walls and then there's like a little window kind of a door window out there and also a wooden ceiling um, but it's very cool that you like twisted it and made it like a big sphere um, I just think that is very cool um, so this is very creative and it is really nice so I do think the composition is very good um, I don't think it's too noisy it is very interesting but it's not too crazy um, I also really like the lighting and I like this cool thing back here um, I don't I'm not sure if this is like metal or glass but I do think it does look really cool and you added a lot of detail into the scene as well like you have some different things here like some plants and you also have some candles and some different uh, kitchen stuff here and some little pencils and things so this is very nice so I don't really have very many ideas to make it more photorealistic but I do think that adding a fabric texture on this would really help it doesn't really look like there's any texture it just looks like a gray color so I would add a fabric texture to the chair here I think that would help to make it a bit more realistic and then also I do think this thing in the back background is really cool um, but I'm not quite sure exactly what it is it looks a little bit like metal but then it also looks like maybe some glass it looks like maybe some colored glass with maybe some lights that are coming in behind it and maybe the glass has some roughness and it's kind of bumpy um, so I'm not quite sure what it is maybe be a little bit more clear with what it is but it does look really cool um, I was thinking maybe it's some sort of like skylight or something like that um, it does look really cool though and I do like it but really that's it I don't really have very many critiques this is really quite cool um, you even added in like a smoke alarm this kind of looks like a smoke alarm which is very realistic and I really like this glass door you have here and the textures and everything are really good and it looks like you actually use displacements to actually displace uh, the bricks so that is very good as well but really this is quite nice uh, so thank you for sending this in and I hope the critiques were helpful 
All right, we have a really cool nature scene here, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. So this artwork comes from Shardul Fater from India. So this is a very, very cool artwork. I really do like it. I really like the lighting, um, and the composition is also really cool. I like this cool like tree um, with these little glowing ornaments, and also I think the nature does look really good. You have some rocks and some grass and some flowers. I do have a few critiques though, so let's go over that. So the first thing that I would do is I would add a glare in Blender's compositor. So I really like these glowing ornaments that you added on the tree. It's very cool and it makes it feel more like magical or mystical. Um, it's very cool, but I would probably make the lights a little bit brighter. And then in Blender's compositor, I would add a glare node. Um, and then I would change the color, maybe like a blue or a purple or a red, something like that. So what you could do is you could turn the brightness up on the ornament material. Um, so it's a little bit lighter and then you could make it pretty light, but just make it a slight blue color or maybe a slight purple color. Color, um, and that way it'll just have a little bit of that color in there and then when you add a glare the glare should be more of that color um, so just giving it a glare or a glow in the compositor I think would really help and then I do think that there should be a little bit more light kind of brightening up the center of the scene. So you could add a few more lights just kind of around, or you could just make those hanging lights, those ornament lights, you could make those a little bit brighter. And that way it'll just kind of bright up the scene around here, maybe brighten up these rocks a little bit and brighten up the tree. And then also I did notice that these flowers are kind of growing sideways. Um, and it does make sense that flowers could maybe grow on a hill, but they would probably kind of grow up um, and not grow sideways with the hill. Um, that just doesn't really make any sense but some of these flowers I like growing at a 90 degree angle um, and that just doesn't really make any sense so I would rotate the flowers and make them so they're going much more up. So that's what I would do to improve this but I really do like the scene. I really like the lighting and the sky in the background and this tree is very cool and I do like those little glowing ornaments. That's very cool as well. So I hope the critiques were helpful and thank you for sending this in. All right, this next one here is a very cool sci-fi scene, and I am having trouble pronouncing your name. I do apologize for that, but this is a very, very cool sci-fi scene, um, and you did call it Moon Colony, so that is very cool. And you said you just started Blender from scratch three months ago, and you would appreciate some feedback on the composition, lighting, materials, and you were wondering how to blend assets together in one scene. So this is very good, especially if you've only been using Blender for three months. I really like the moon environment. Um, this is very cool. All the rocks here. This texture is really nice. And I especially like the moon colony. These models are really quite cool. I definitely have some critiques though, so let's go over that. So I was wondering, are you going more for realistic or more for science fiction? Because if you were trying to go for a render that looks more realistic, obviously we don't have a base on the moon, but you know, one day we might have a base on the moon. So if you are going for something a bit more realistic, like something that could happen in the future, um, it doesn't really make sense that the world or the earth is this close because the moon is actually quite far away It's much more far away from the earth. The moon is orbiting the earth, but it's not this close This is way too close to the earth so if you wanted it to be a bit more realistic, then what you could do is you could make the earth way smaller, kind of the size of this sphere right here and put it kind of out there in the distance. And then also from the moon, you can't really see all these bright galaxies and things. So I would just make it black. Um, you could add some stars, but I would just make it mostly black. Or if you were going more for some sort of abstract science fiction thing, then this does look pretty cool. Um, but with how close this is to the Earth, this kind of feels like maybe it would be an asteroid, maybe an asteroid like floating around the Earth or something like that, um, or floating around an alien planet, because the moon really just isn't this close to the Earth. Now as far as the composition goes, I think it would be better if it were more of a landscape than a portrait, because right now the image is kind of going up and down. I think it would be better if it would be more side to side. And then also, I would probably zoom in way more and just focus on this, because this is really the most interest in the scene. This is the more, most interesting thing, um, and I do think it looks really cool. So I would probably zoom in here and make it more of a landscape, so more of a sideways image instead of up and down, um, and just kind of get rid of some of this stuff, maybe move the earth down so you can see it a little bit more down here and maybe move the galaxy down but I would mostly just focus on the moon colony. Now also it looks like there's another earth right here and I don't really know why there'd be another earth going around the big earth. Um, maybe this is like a moon or something but if you zoom in here it looks like there's clouds and things so it does look like another earth. Um, so I would probably just get rid of one of the earths and just keep one of them. And then also I can see that you added like a cloud layer kind of right here you can see there's some clouds kind of floating over the earth but I think this is way too high um, because clouds are way up in the sky 
but the earth is actually really really big and so this space right here the amount of space from the surface up here to where the clouds are that's like way too high um, and you can't really see that if you've ever looked at images of the earth like from space from the ISS um, from the International Space Station you can't really see this gap between the clouds and the earth just because the earth is so big that even though the clouds are really high up they don't really look like they're that high at all so what I would do is I would take this cloud layer and just scale it way down so that there isn't any gap right here and then also it does look like there's a bit of a flat plane um I can see there's this cool like nebula purplish pinkish thing but it looks kind of like it's just a flat plane and it looks like it kind of goes all the way down here um, into the Mars colony um, and I don't quite know why that's there um, I think it does look cool kind of like as a space nebula kind of in the background but I would push it farther back because yeah it looks like it's going through the earth it just kind of looks like a flat plane that has some sort of transparency and then it looks like it's going down right here onto the colony so I would just push it way into the background and then you were also wondering about the lighting and the materials um, and I do think the lighting and materials do look really quite good although one thing that I would do is I would add an atmosphere to the earth um, so what you could do is you could make some kind of like blue glowing atmosphere just kind of over the earth and I think that would make it more interesting and more photorealistic but this is a very cool artwork here and I really do like it, but I think changing those things would really help. So that's the critique. Thank you for sending this in and I hope the critiques were helpful. All right, and the last two artworks for the art critique come from Blender Boy. Um, so this first one here that you sent in, uh, this is a very cool helmet here. Um, I do really like it. I really like the red bits that are coming up from the back. Um, this looks very good. And I do think the modeling is pretty good and also I do really like the lighting. So this is a very nice artwork. Uh, let's go over how how I would critique it. So I would probably change it to a gold or a silver metal material. So what you could do is you could make generally the entire thing like kind of like a silver or shiny metal and then you could just make some parts here and there kind of like a gold material. So maybe like this little metal piece, maybe this metal piece up here, um, and maybe like some edges or something. You could change that to kind of a gold material um, because you did name this artwork Sparta helmet. So I did look up those kind of helmets and I also did look up like Roman soldier helmets. And when I was looking at those reference images, it seems like usually um, the material is kind of like a silverish metal or kind of like a gold color. So what I would do is I would change out this rusty material to silver metal and gold metal. And then also I don't really see why this visor would be useful because if you were wearing this helmet and you put the visor down, you actually wouldn't be able to see anything because it doesn't have any slits in the visor. So I would either um, cut through this in the modeling and add some slits into the visor or I would get rid of it. Because yeah, if you rotated this down over the eyepiece, you wouldn't even be able to see anything. So it wouldn't be very useful. And then the last thing that I would do is I would try to keep the thickness the same. So you have like a little bit of a thickness here along the rim. And I do think that is really good. But you can see that it's thinner up here and then kind of thicker out here. So I would just go along and make sure that the thickness is the same along the rim. But this is a very cool helmet model. So I think if you just improve those things, then this would look really nice. All right, so let's go over to your last render. All right, and the last artwork for this critique video again is from Blender Boy. And you named the artwork from Mars, so I'm assuming that this is going to be on Mars. Now, if this is supposed to be Mars, this actually isn't very realistic because the moon isn't that close to Mars. Uh, Mars is super far away. Now, I believe Mars does have some moons, but they don't really look exactly like our moon. Um, and also, I think they are much smaller. Um, so I don't think this is super realistic to Mars. So if you were trying to make this look like Mars, then I would say either get rid of the moon or make it a lot smaller and maybe change the colors a bit to make it look more like uh, one of Mars's moons. And then the light that's shining on the surface does make it look like it's daytime. Uh, but then you're also able to see the stars. Now Mars does actually have an atmosphere like Earth, but it's a very thin atmosphere. Um, so during the daytime, you're not actually able to see the stars, but I believe at nighttime on Mars, you are able to see the stars. Um, but with the lighting here, it does look kind of like it's the daytime. So I would say just be more clear with that. So if it's daytime, I would make it a bit more of a blue kind of hazy, maybe orange sky. Or if it's nighttime, then I would just make it much darker so that you can see the stars um, and then also get rid of the moon. Or if you didn't really Really want this to be Mars if you wanted it to be some other kind of alien planet then that would be fine and you could kind of leave this all how it is now also I don't really have a good idea of how big the landscape is because with how bumpy the landscape is it almost looks like this is really really close down it almost looks like the camera is like really close to the ground and you can kind of see pebbles and things just because this is like super super bumpy so it kind of looks like there would be maybe rocks and pebbles but then also these kind of look like big mountains so 
I would say just be a little bit more clear with the scale. So maybe you could add in some more elements so that you can get a better idea about the scale. I'm just not very clear about the scale. I'm not quite sure if um, these are like really big hills or maybe they're just little pebbles. Um, and then I'm not quite sure how big these mountains are. And then I do feel like this ground here is way too bumpy unless of course the camera is super, super close to the ground and those are all like little pebbles and rocks and things. And then speaking of rocks, I do think that adding rocks would really help. So you could create some different pebbles and some small rocks rocks and medium rocks and then you could add those rocks in as a particle system and just kind of put them all around um, and that would make it look much more like Mars or a planet of some kind. And then one really big thing that would help is just adding some sort of main subject to the scene. Um, so maybe adding an astronaut, maybe adding a spaceport or maybe a spaceship um, and just putting the main subject somewhere in the scene, maybe kind of right here. Um, and also adding in some main subject to the scene would also give you more of an idea of how big the scene is because as I was talking about earlier I'm not quite sure if this is like a giant mountain or maybe it's just a hill and then I'm not quite sure if maybe these are big hills or maybe they're just little pebbles so if you just added in a spaceport or an astronaut or a spaceship or something that would give a better idea about the scale of the scene so those are the critiques. I hope this was helpful and thank you for sending in your artworks. So this is going to wrap it up for the 14th Blender Art Critique on my channel. So thank you everyone for sending in your artworks and I hope the critiques were helpful. And I will be doing one more art critique so you can submit your artwork through the Google form. I'll have the link in the description and just make sure that you submit your artwork before December 1st because on December 1st of 2021 I will look through all of these submissions and then I'll be creating the last art critique video. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope these were helpful and I hope to see you in a future video.